Welcome! In this video, we are going to introduce the core WordPress Data API. Now, the Data API in WordPress is a modular state management system built with JavaScript on top of Redux. So if you're familiar with state management systems like Redux, this should be familiar to you. And if you're not, that's totally fine as well. We just don't want to mistake the data API as Redux exactly because it is built on top of it. So there are some differences. Now within the data API, there are several data stores. These are modular units that store different parts of WordPress or plugin state. So for WordPress core, there are several stores that exist and your plugin might have its own store as well as other plugins registering their own as well. The core data stores in WordPress are bound to change over time. However, at the moment we have our core data store, one for making annotations, a block data store, editor data store, an editor UI data store, a notices data store, and a new user experience data store, as well as more. Like I said, this list is bound to change over time, but it just shows you some of the data stores that exist within the WordPress core data API. Now for each one of these stores, we get a few built-in methods. The first one is select, and select lets us get data from a specific store. We then have subscribe, which is called whenever state is updated anywhere within any of these stores, and it'll allow us to subscribe to changes. We also have a higher order component called with select that will allow us to use select in a higher order component so those updates are always seen and we may be able to avoid using subscribe directly. We also have dispatch, which lets us call actions versus where select will let us get data. And along with dispatch, we also have with dispatch a higher order component so that we can pass these items from dispatch down. Now let's take a look at each one of these looking at how it works a little bit more specifically. We'll start off with select, which is probably one of the most common ones that you'll use. Now we could get select from WP data, and then all we have to pass it is the name of the store we want to get data from, followed by the specific selector method that we'll use to get the data that we want. Here are a few examples of select in action. We could see here that we're going into the core data store and getting all of our posts using something called get entity records. Here, we're getting all of the information about the core quote block by going into the core blocks data module and calling get block type. Here we're going into the editor data API module and getting a list of all the blocks currently in the editor. In this one here in the edit post or editor UI, we're checking to see is the editor sidebar opened. And finally, another example of select, this time in the notices data API calling get notices. Now, after looking at all of these different stores and all of the different methods you could get, hopefully you're asking yourself, how do I know what selector functions are available? Now there's two general approaches you could take. The first one, which I highly recommend, is to type out WP data select and then the name of the data API module that you want to look at. For example, here we see core blocks and it will list out all of the selector methods available to you. The documentation is also growing for Gutenberg, so you could also come into the data module reference in the Gutenberg handbook and look at the selectors there. Now, all of this is new and still growing, so you may not be able to find the extent of documentation you want, but this is a good starting point to see what is available. Now, let's turn our attention over to subscribe. Subscribe is called whenever any of the state in any of those data modules changes. So in this example here, you can see that we're getting both subscribe and select from WP data. It's rare that you'd want to subscribe to state changes without using select to be able to pull data in from figuring out what state has changed. Then you could see that subscribed is called and we're passing it in a function. And inside of that, we're then going to call select and get the current block count from the editor of how many blocks there are and log that to the page. Now, because we called subscribe here, every time the state updates, we will get a new updated method of select. Whereas if we had just called select on its own, it would get called once, but not every single time there was a change.
We could also look at this code example here that shows that the subscribe call actually returns a new function that we could save as unsubscribe for any time we want that subscription to end. So if we only want to watch changes for a certain point until something happens, then unsubscribe from those changes, we could do that here. Now we'll look at this in more depth and in practice, but let's keep moving on to look at all of these methods at a high level. So next we have with select, which is a higher order component for select. Here's the way with select works. Let's imagine that we had a component that accepted blocks as a parameter and then looped through or mapped through them all and listed out the name of each block. What we could do to get the actual blocks is wrap this in a with select. So what we would do is get with select from WP data, and then we could export default with select which will give us access to the select method so we don't have to get that directly from WP data anymore. And then we return an object that has certain values. So here we could see that blocks is going to be set equal to select get blocks. And then finally, the way that higher order components work is we pass in the actual component we want to be affected as a parameter. So what this code altogether would do is make sure that when we exported block list, it would be wrapped by with select and get access to all of the blocks. We could see in block list that we set blocks as one of the property values that we're getting out, and we're getting that from our with select higher order component. Now, if higher order components are new to you, this may seem a little bit funky, but again, we will make sure that we dig into this in a little bit more depth so that you can get comfortable with it. The important thing to remember here is that if we had just called select in our block list normally, it would not get updated every single time that value of get blocks changed. However, when we wrap our component in with select, then we can be assured that every single time there is a change in the number of blocks or in what blocks are available, that our block list component will get that updated data. So that takes care of looking at select, subscribe, and with select. Now let's turn our attention to looking at dispatch and with dispatch, which will let us call actions in WordPress rather than get data directly. Starting off, let's look at how dispatch works at a code level. What we would do first is make sure that we get dispatch from WP data, and then we need to tell dispatch what store we want to look at specifically, and then finally call the action method that we need. This is very similar to how select works out of WP data as well. Let's take a look at a few examples. Here we can see we're going into the core editor data module and we're calling remove block and passing it a specific block ID or what Gutenberg calls client IDs. So this is an example of how we could dispatch an action to make something happen. Here's another one where we close the sidebar by going into the edit post data module and calling close general sidebar. Another one where we could create a notice and pass that notice in to create notice inside the core notices data module. Again, if you're wondering how do I know what actions are available, the same response is true as for selectors. You can go into the editor and type wp.data-dispatch for each of these data stores and see a list of all of them, or you could look over the documentation in the Gutenberg handbook and take a look at the list of actions listed there as well. Now let's look at with dispatch. We can see here that we've created a component for a delete button, and we expect to get client ID and remove block, which is a function, down from props. We're then calling the built-in WordPress icon button, and on click of that button, we're calling remove block and passing in that client ID or that block ID. Now to pass remove block as a function down, we would call with dispatch and get it out of WP data, and then we would write our higher order function. In this case, we're going to export with dispatch. We get access to dispatch, and then we're setting remove block equal to dispatch core editor remove block. As a final step, you could see that we're passing delete button into with dispatch, which will give us access to remove block. Now we don't get client ID directly here, so when we call our delete button, we would actually have to pass that in as a prop on our own. However, we could see with dispatch in action here so that rather than having to call this dispatch action in line, you could just pass it down as a prop. This could be helpful if multiple things need to get the same call 
However, unlike with select, with dispatch isn't likely to need to change or get updated on the fly, so it's just a simple higher order component wrapper for convenience sake. One last thing I'll mention here is Compose, and Compose is a higher order component for combining other higher order components. Now, if you haven't worked with these a lot, then this might be something new to you. However, if you are familiar with these type of patterns, then Compose should not be new at all to you. So in this example, you could see we're getting Compose from WP Compose, so it's not actually coming from the data API directly. And this is what Compose looks like in action. So you can see that Compose takes an array of other higher order components, and then we finally pass the component that we want to have access to all of these in at the end of Compose, and this is how Compose would look in action. So if you ever need to combine with Select, with Dispatch, or other higher order functions in general, Compose is a very helpful higher order component or general function to let you do that. So with all of this covered, we have a pretty good high-level introduction to the data API. Let's do a little bit of a review. First off, there are several data stores in WordPress. We got the core editor, blocks, edit post, etc. Also, the data API is extendable for plugins as well. We didn't look at it in this video here, but we will in future videos show you how to hook into the data API and set up your own data stores. Now, part of WP data is access to select, subscribe, and dispatch, which are going to be helpful in getting data from these data stores as well as calling actions within them. And finally, we have higher order components to make our lives a little bit easier, and we looked at with select, with dispatch, and compose. So at this point, I would highly suggest some practice. Go into the console where Gutenberg is loaded and log out all of the selector and dispatch methods for all of the core data API stores. And in fact, that's what we'll do together or at least get started doing some of this in the next video. But here I suggest you go ahead and take a look for yourself before proceeding.